control tonight, so everybody stay under control. Mrs. Bowling? Here. Mrs. Boatwright? Here. Mrs. Gray? Dr. Flowers? Present. Mr. Leary? Here. Mrs. Munter? Here. Ms. Winslow? Here. Okay, we have a form. Um, all right, let's all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. There's no flag. Okay, ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. I know. All right. I'll just get hmm. I'd like to ask for a moment of silence for the following individuals. Peggy Hogan, who is the aunt of RHS teacher Sarah Bagley. William Sears, brother of Pell custodian Doug Sears and Peter Cobble, brother-in-law of TMS clerk, Diana Kreiner. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. All right, so the first thing we're um, gonna do tonight is um, report out on the subcommittee appointments. And um, so everybody on our group received these, but we just want to make the public aware that um, uh, the following uh, people have been picked for different committees. Uh, these were all done by what people volunteered and where their interests might lie. So um, we, by the way, we are gonna be interviewing for new legal counsel. Our um, Mr. Galvin, who served us for many, many years is retiring. So uh, we will be, that'll be coming up here in late January. We're gonna, we've got some dates now we've thrown out to, so we can interview. Uh, so we, on our finance advisory board, we have Mrs. Boatwright is chairing it like she has for the last couple of years. She does a great job and um, myself and Sandra Flowers are members of that. Um, Newport Education Foundation, Kendra Munter, volunteer to do this, going to those meetings once a month. Very important um, to, to be the representative with e NPEF. They do an incredible amount for us. And um, the next one is policy. And that's Stephanie Winslow is going to chair that. And she's got James Dring, Robert Leary, and the alternate is Sandra Flowers, if someone can't show up. Uh, the Association of School Committees, it's going to be myself and Louisa, um, and for the school committee liaison, we're gonna get this started again. And Sandra Flowers has volunteered and she's already reached out to the mayor um, about getting this. It normally meets like once a month. And um, Louisa Boatwright's on that and Stephanie Winslow also. The school committee legislative liaison, this is working with our state legislators. Uh, and that's Sandra, um, Dr. Sandra Flowers is the chairperson and Louisa and uh, myself are on that committee. Um, wellness, uh, we have Kendra Munter and Stephanie Winslow. Uh, they're going to be meeting very soon to determine who's going to be the chairperson. I'm sure they're going to fight over it. Um, gonna yeah, they're going to co-chair. Okay. Um, the other things that this year we're looking at is um, negotiations for both Council 94 and um, TAN. I believe that the contracts are up in like June 30th. Yeah, so we were waiting to see what was going on with um, regionalization before we chose all that, and um, so those those will be coming up as we meet with the the leadership in each of those those groups. But um, something di different that we're going to try to do this time is that um, we're going to ask when your group meets if you can come back and give a report to very short, yes. but just so that everybody knows what happened. Um, during that month um, with those groups. So anyway, that, that'll be good because sometimes I think we, uh, you know, forget that everybody else wasn't at the meeting. All right. 
Okay, next um, we have Jack Steiner, and he is going to give us his monthly update from uh, Rogers High School. Thank you very much. I just want to say welcome back from winter break. Uh, going on at Rogers right now, uh, so this week, Maeve Crowley hit 1,000 points in her high school career, so congratulations to her. Mm -hmm. uh, before uh, winter break started, all seniors had to submit their senior photos along with their senior quotes. Uh, and now cap and gowns are available to purchase for the seniors. But all purchases must happen by January 20th. Uh, they have been sent emails to purchase those caps and gowns. February 1st, the, fir the first semester is going to come to an end. And from January 27th through February 1st will be midterm exams. Uh, the new change to the bus loop has been implemented, and it seems to be working perfectly fine. No one seems to have any issues with it, and I know the teacher parking has also not has gone off pretty smoothly as well with the change in that. Uh, Maya Brooks, a senior at Rogers High School, part of the uh, graphic design NACTEC program, created and designed the uh, fire calendar, fire safety calendar for the Newport Fire Department for 2023. I didn't see right here. She designed how the calendar would be laid out. So that was really cool to see. <laughs> and it features a bunch of, is it all Newport students? It's all the Newport students. Yeah, all Newport students wow. who participated in the design. They created photos and put them in this calendar. Can you buy those? Um, they're actually being donated. If the committee would like to look at that, I can look into that, mm -hmm. what they're doing. We can pass it to yeah. the major. And finally, another senior, William Daly, is going to be awarded by the NAACP uh, in two weeks at a, I believe it's a Thompson, High, Thompson Middle School event for his annual coat drive that he put on this year for the second year running. So congratulations to him on that. Anybody have any questions for Jackson? I would like to find out how to get one of these. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Great. Thank you very much. Uh, oh. Stephanie? Um, any seniors that have trouble purchasing a cap and gown? Like if, it, if someone has trouble purchasing a cap and gown, how do we help them? So I believe in the email that was sent out to all the seniors, there is um, someone you talk to from that, but I don't know the person off the top of my head. All right. Thank you. Have we ever considered like collecting them from year to year? Because I would think some people just go home and throw them away. I have no idea, but we can look into it. I know way back in the dinosaur days when I did that, we gave it back. <laughs> we, we put it on. We did the ceremony and we came back to the gym and gave it back. So I will check into that. I was going to say maybe look at reusing the robe, but let them buy the mortarboard because yeah. that's really only one. They keep it right now. Take. What's that? I said just maybe we look at reusing the robes because the kids only seem to ever want is the tassel. mortarboard and yeah. the tassel. Yeah, I will check. Thank you. Okay. Um, Next, we have, I think that's all we have for you tonight, but thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Are you giving up the calendar? Do you need a bag? Um, you, can, you can take it back. Oh, I got it from Ms. Burke. Oh, it's mine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's my calendar. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. um, okay, so next we have public comment. Did anybody sign up for public comment? Yes. Okay. I have Robert Terribio. All right, Mr. Terribio. Oh, you found it? Oh, wow. Awesome. There you go. Yeah. Can't wait. My name is Robert Turbio, Two Rolling Road. Um, I'm a teacher at Pell. I just wanted to just give my how disappointed I am on this new uh, courtyard that was built at Thompson Middle School. Uh, we thought it was going to be something that it would be helpful for the kids, but now their space has been cut in half. The space that the fifth graders were promised to go play on is cut in half, and now there's, what, trash cans in the other half and a parking for the principal with the sign on it, principal parking only. 
So as a taxpayer and a parent of a student at Thompson, I'm just very disappointed and I just want to know who who agreed to that that plan? Who saw that and was like, all right, let's let's cut that courtyard in half for the kids to play on? It's just it's sad to see that. And I just wanted to let you know about that I'm disappointed in that design. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next thing we have uh, an action item. Um, we're at 4.1, and this is request for approval of RHS program of studies. Um, so, um, Ms. Chair, um, asking Madam Chair that be pulled for tonight, and we'll present next month. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. I think it's been pulled. Okay, next one is. Uh, got to get all the way back to here. Our next action item is 4.2, request for approval of collective agreement between College Unbound Equity Institute and the Newport Public Schools. Um, do I hear a motion to approve? Uh, it's been, uh, the motion was made by Stephanie and seconded by um, Mrs. Munter. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm requesting the approval of this collaborative agreement with College Unbound and the Equity Institute. The organizations have partnered to create a TA to BA program. And the program is looking to develop a next generation of teachers by providing the opportunity to our paraeducators, classroom aides, and other non-certified staff a, path, a pathway towards a bachelor's degree and eventually a teaching certificate. Uh, the implement implementation of the TA to BA program can assist the district in building our own future teachers from our community. So I'm asking for the um, committee's approval to move this forward. I have already met with uh, C94 uh, un union leadership and shared this information with them and they were excited about it and we will be holding a meeting for anyone interested in this at Pell Elementary School later this month. Okay, I'll open up the floor for questions. Mr. Leary. Any cost, Mrs. Bowen? <clears throat> Any cost? No. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Lindsay? I have a question because, I mean, I've always been frustrated. How can we recruit teachers who reflect our student body when we have a housing crisis on Aquidneck Island because, you know, a new teacher's salary is not enough to live on here? Um, and there are not a lot of salaries that are enough to live on here. So um, I, so this program is very exciting because, you know, presumably we're getting people who are already here and already living here. But I know we have a large population of Newporters who are in maybe an income controlled housing situation. So what happens to these people who want to become teachers and maybe then they are going to have a job and benefits and a different salary and they're potentially forced out of their housing. I'm just curious to know what kind of supports are in place for helping people transition into this role besides just, you know, you have to have your own housing and transportation and all that already. I'm not aware of the supports that are in place. Um, that is something that Rhonda Mitchell and I know the Housing Authority have been reviewing and looking at. I do believe they were trying to look at some scaled program that could gradually um, be implemented, but I am not aware of anything. It is a challenge. And I know for workforce housing in Newport and on Aquidneck Island, it's very challenging. And all the way from, I know the Newport County Chamber of Commerce to uh, Working Cities, which has had this on our agenda for a very long time. As far as when one meets the cliff effect it's still a problem that I believe is being addressed. I know Ms. Bo Wright is on it on Working Cities. She's been there with me for quite a while, many years. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if you want, if you have any updates on that. Uh, I will just say I'm on, it's into different groups. And so I'm not on the Cliff Effect group, but I know that they have presented up at, uh, um, not City Hall, I'm going to say, uh, but the State House. And I think they've also gone to, um, Washington, D.C. So there's actions being taken, but it is a big issue is what it is. So, um, yeah, I mean, 
there's a lot of things that, but that's, those are the rules of the game. And so we're trying to work around that, but um, I think that's why, you know, good salaries are required. And, you know, it's really about getting, working with families to say that they are salaried positions with healthcare, with benefits. And those are some of the things that are very, very important that the union helps to provide. So that's really all I can say. So I think this is probably a, good one for us to bring to the city council when we finally have our first liaison meeting in a long time, just the discussion that, you know, we want to implement this program, but workforce housing is going to be something we need to support it, the success of it. Right. And I think that's a, I think if we were at the meeting of their priorities, it's, that's very high on most okay. of their priorities, I have to say, but, you know, it's been a concerted effort because it's, this is now the fifth year we're going into for working cities really which is now under the NPFF partnership and um, I've really been on the diversity in employment and businesses as well as business uh, excuse me skills development and workforce training that we're hoping to use the career tech center for that which we have done already and then COVID got in the way so we're, um, but the new building we hope to do that too so we can skill people up so they can get high higher paying jobs and it's not just um, hourly and, um, you know, without sick benefits and things like that too, so. Okay, is there any other discussion from anyone? Um, just one more sure. question, just curious, you know, like who, who will be the point person in Newport Public Schools to support the, the TAs and their like candidacy? Do we have somebody who? That, it, it actually came to my office directly through, mm -hmm. um, uh, past um, working relationship with uh, some of the directors. Um, so it'll most likely, it'll go through, I'll have to talk to, I, I, I want to talk to C94, how they want to handle that, mm -hmm. because most of them are members of C, C94. Okay. So let me find out from them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But to your point that it does ask for a liaison from our side to, mm -hmm. to coordinate. I believe right now my office is listed. All right, um, hearing no more discussion, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Okay. All right, next we have the, uh, um, we have, uh, yeah, I'd like to um, combine 4.3 and 4.4 4 to be voted on together, and I'd like to motion that we, motion. Yes, okay. make Anybody motion to put them together. Mrs. Winslow, it's been moved and seconded that we accept 4.3 uh, and 4.4 4 together. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now we're moving on to 5.0. Um, this is the school building committee update, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Mrs. Boatwright, if you would like to do that. Um, yeah, we're I'm still, sorry. Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, Ms. The vote, please. That motion was to combine. Combine them. Combine them. I'm sorry. And approve. Oh, and approve. Okay. Thank you. So on the school building committee first, um, here at Pell, uh, several items got done on the checklist. So we're down to very few couple doors that haven't been, haven't arrived yet. And then mostly the outdoor activities, the irrigation and some of the trees and the fence. But other than that, Pell is going very well, and we've heard great um, reviews from all those who are working out of here and the students and parents. At um, Rogers, we uh, did have value engineering. It was voted on by this group um, after our last school committee meeting that we would defer those three items. Um, they um, SLAM is now what they call healing the building because they had to make the exteriors and so on. So all that should be ready. We're hoping by January 23rd so that we can approve it and send it on to um, ride or get the bid packages right now. What's the 60% CDs is separate from that because that's um, the bid packages are at hundred hundred percent construction documents but we're just trying to get the budgets together and upload them to ride to go forward with the whole project, which is seeming to be 
um, close enough for them to approve. Other than that, not much else has happened since last year, I don't think. It's, oh, no, well, um, the bus loop is opened as we was reported to us. That's going very well. The auditorium is completely down and they've started on the rest of the um, site work and that's what's going forward. And, and also, I just want to remind everyone, if you want to get on our weekly updates, that you just would um, uh, uh, email Mrs. Nash and she'll put you on them there um, very lengthy and they'll tell you everything. Nobody can claim that, you know, that we don't put the information out there. So the one other thing I will add is on the 23rd is a neighborhood meeting that will be going on after our school building committee. Um, the last one, last committee was uh, less than 45 minutes. So I don't know how long the next one will be, but you don't want to miss it. And I know we've already been contacted by some neighbors who are planning to come. So mm -hmm. it's going to be good. Okay. Um, so that doesn't, so next we go to the consent agenda. This is yes. well, some questions. That sure, I'm sorry. For the public, we can go through that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, could you... Um, I'm looking through these the, the November um, November fifteenth, twenty twenty two thing. <clears throat> looking through the, the Gilbane's things and, and correct me where I'm wrong. It says the design contingency. They have a three point one million dollar thing. It says design and estimate contingency two million and escalation cost of four nine million. So they have ten million built into their bid. That that can be used. You want to explain that? And and I'm gonna ask some questions because I I was involved with Pell when we did this building, and it was all done up front. So I'm concerned with the escalation of 4.9 million in cost. Go ahead and start it. Um, there's so there's a bunch of contingencies. You're right, which is why um, we will be able to send in the 60% CDs. But there is a design contingency. Uh, which is from 60% um, CDs to final. Then there is escalation. That is really held with Gilbane, but it's all put into the construction dot, construction contract, which, you know, CD, 60% CD was done really in October, and then we're um, about to bid it pretty soon, is our hope. So there's a significant percentage in there. And then there is the... Our um, owner contingency, which is $5 million, which we're saying maybe we can take down a little bit. And then there's also a construction contingency. So there's a lot of contingency money in there. Once the bid packages go out, the first two go away. So the design contingency is only for, from 60% to bid package. And that's the same for the escalation factor, because those are all in the bid packages. And you've so, actually cut the contingencies. Yeah. But you, then they're gone. So yeah, what's right. the cost of the design? Is that the 4.91? Um, um, the, look at these numbers right here from the sheet. And uh, as I said, it's 10 million from us, and 10, 10 million from the contractor. This wasn't- Mr. Leary, no, I'm sorry. Correct me, Chair Bob Appel. We, the money we had at Pell, there was no question up front. So we don't know what the hard numbers are yet, in other words. Well, they're estimates. That's why the C, the 60% CD, which was done end, end of September into October, through October, that is, those are estimates. And so these two contingencies for design and escalation are because they're estimates. That's why they go away. And only what will be left is just the owner's contingency and the contractor's contingency. So and that's what you go for. How much is going to go away so the public knows? How much is going to go away? It, it doesn't go away. If we don't use it, it goes back to our project. Well, how much is that? Well, that's so what we're going forward with to ride right now we're about over by about $3 million. And there's $6 million total in the whole thing. So it ends up being about a three million, I'm, a, I'm rounding the numbers, but it means that the contingencies for design and escalation are about $3 million. That's and Bobby, we're kind of at a disadvantage if we don't have it in front of, you know, to, to be able to, to, to give you correct information. So these are just estimates once again, but that's why the, as soon as we start getting back hard numbers, we're gonna be able to 
you know, really know what our budget is. So they, they could say to us on the escalation, uh, 4.9 million and the design is 2 million. That's seven million dollars. Um, basically, they could say that we need to use all seven. But the escalation cost is going to be so much more for us that that we're going to pay. You're going to pay more to that. So you may not get some of that 4.9 million. They may they may get that all to themselves. What we've been saying is we want to take risk off the table. That's what Downs Construction has been saying in every single one of our meetings. And so. Because escalation costs are so much higher than they were three years ago before COVID, the market is all over the place. So um, we are, so the numbers are much higher than typical also. So, and again, right now with RIDE, um, because we have other dollars in the bucket, they, Downs has said that they should approve this thing as it is. And then we just need to get that last bid package out to have hard numbers. At that point, we will be able to say exactly what is in and what is out. Not until then, because the numbers have been all over the place. We just did the elevator, right? We just um, approved that package uh, yes, or Monday. Yesterday. Yesterday, thank uh -huh. you. And that was 40% over. So we've had some things that are under and some that are over and elevators are one of the ones that's very high. We've heard recently that uh, steel is coming down and stabilizing. So hopefully it doesn't go up. Maybe it will go down a little bit because some of the projects due to this recession are uh, slowing down right now. So actually maybe we'll see some benefit to our little delay that we've just had. So what's the time frame on these hard numbers? So we're trying to get the bid packages finalized, um, I believe, for that 23rd, 23rd or 30th is the backup date. Then it takes, Gilbane reshapes them and puts them out on the street, and it's usually a four- to eight-week process after that. And there's several packages, so this one is a very large packet, so it actually will be, they won't do them all at the same time. Once they go out onto the street, it's like a four- to eight week process. So it will take, they're guessing into the middle of March for us to, and now because we've had the delay, it will probably be the middle of April because before we'll have them all. So everybody in that committee knew that we had $15 million basically sitting there to wait till we get hard numbers. The owner's contingency and the contractor's contingency has to stay in just like it did at Pell and every other project. So it's really just the design contingency that, and the escalation contingency and those we've been bringing down as we get closer and closer, but because the market has been so volatile, which is a fact, um, it's been harder to wean those down during and, our project. And Bobby, if we if we went out and used those right now or applied it to some other, you know, area of shortage, then at the end of the project, we don't have the money to finish it. We have to, this is a conservative way in which we've been advised to do it. And this way, all projects are, you know, in the state of Rhode Island. But, not Pell. So, Bobby, That's Mr. Larry, but no, Mr. Larry. They, they own, they own they, they, the, the money was up front. The onus was on the construction company. And if, if they gave us a bid for $5 million in steel and it went to 5.5 million. That's, they owned it because we yes. did it by sections. But, the, but what happened We're to you, but what happened at Pell money. was you also had the design project. Then when it went out to bid, you had to redo the whole thing. And that's where we're at. We have a construction manager project. So it hasn't been bid yet. That's the thing. We're working off of estimates until it's actually bid. But the problem, as you know, we got the DD estimates only back in June. And when we got the CD estimates, they went way up. And when we had contingencies in there. We brought them down a little bit because again, we only have a much shorter time between the time that those are done and the bid packages. So we don't want, we've been trying to get more but, out but of that. Bobby, but, so you just answered your own question, happens. your own question when you said, and if the, package went out, it came in at five, and then it turned out to be 5.5, they have to eat it. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying no, to get- No, we have the hard numbers. We had the hard numbers of Pell. 
we had them for, and each section was done. We had right. the hard numbers. We, we just That's, not there I, yet. Pat Kelly, you're yeah. totally involved with it. We had the numbers, and if it went up, that was on their problem. That was coming out of their fund. They had to do it. Now, it seems like they have they, these guys are sitting back saying, okay, the numbers are going to come higher. And, you know, so uh, I'm not going to preserve it anymore. Please check with other people yeah. involved. Pell. I guarantee you that's how it was done. And I'm not sure you guys should have done that in the beginning, or some of you should look at it closely. But one last thing. Could you, for the public, make it clear what exactly, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the track and field is going to be gone, the parking lot is going to be gone, the central office is going to be gone, and Cosmo and Auto is moving back into the um, old Vogue Tech building. Correct or not correct? At, at this point right now, that is how we're submitting the project. That does not mean that we, that is the way we expect it to be when we finish. We, but we want to keep, in order to keep moving, we have to turn in a balanced budget. Right. And, and the project right now is at 112 million, and then the 20 million is the play area with everything. Am I correct about that? 20 million is a good estimate. And 112 is what the cost is now, even though the taxpayers support it at 98 million. Because we got 14 million from the city on the bond. So you take that 98 and 14, you add 112 million. And nobody expected that that uh, the cost of projects would go up somewhere between 30 and 40 percent either. I'm not saying that's the case, but thank you. Okay. All right. That was a good discussion. Um, so do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? It was moved by Sandra and seconded by uh, by. Uh, this one. Yeah. <laughs> so next, um, we will have. I think we want to hear from. Uh, is it Ronnie's under here? Does he need to come up at all? Yes, he does. He always does. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make it worth him coming here tonight. Yeah, just does anybody have any questions on the invoices? You can none at all. Okay. Just you can still stay up here, Ronnie. Got more for you. But. Okay, I'm hearing none. Are there any other questions on the um, consent agenda before we approve vote to approve? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Next, we have the. 6.2, um, this is for the request for approval of invoices and requisitions. Do I have a motion? Mrs. Flowers, Dr. Flowers, and seconded that's by. All con, that's all on the consent agreement. Oh, invoices. Oh, I thought we were sorry. So Monthly, yeah, for 7.1. Do we have a motion to accept 7.1? Second. Motion, Mrs. Winslow, seconded by Mrs. Munter. All right, this is for the correspondence. Um, Anybody have any questions over this? Any correspondence at all? Was any? Yeah, it's in here. Committee. Yeah. Building committee. Yeah. Building committee. Yeah. Right, thank this you. Yep. Mostly the building committee. Okay. Any other questions on that? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. 8.8. <coughs> Expenditure and revenue reports. Now we need you. Uh, <laughs> uh, do I have a motion to accept? Stephanie Winslow and seconded by um, Mrs. Boatwright. Mrs. Boatwright. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Hi, good evening, school committee members. Um, as I ask every month, are there any questions with the information I shared this month? Um, Mr. Leary? Madam Chair? Um, yes, sure. I have a, a, if you could for a second, go right to the ESSA, the very first one, I know it's going by. 8.2. <coughs> Yeah, the um, very first one, ESSA, it, it expired, obviously, and um, sorry, I have my glasses with me, um, 6.30.22. Do you know, and it says it's, and I'm just going to use this as an example, not there, in 1.1 million, whatever. Do you know exactly what that was spent on, am I correct? So, Mr. Leary, if I can um, just give you a little background on this ESSA. I'm looking at page, uh, let me count, one, yeah, page two, I'm not, I'm not sure. three. Four, I just took the first one. I know it's past page eight. page five. six begins with account number twenty one twenty five seventeen zero one. 
Is, is that? Yeah, yeah. Is, SRU, okay. Back to school says. So the way we set up our ESSER funds, they actually, ESSER 2 does not expire until 9 30 23. But the way we set it up in our loss and accounting system, and this is an oversight on my end for just updating the end date of the grant, it actually is longer. The actual award, like I said, is um, expiring on 9 30 2023. But we set it up in loss and at one year intervals. We don't set up multiple years. But um, maybe I can just back up to your original question is, do I know exactly what this $1 million um, yes. represents? Yeah. Well, I can tell you for sure, <laughs> we spent this $1 million based on an approved grant from RIDE. And at this point, we are almost 100% exhausted of the approved $1.1 $1 million budget for that line and specifically for that activity. So when you put it in your computer, that number will come up, it tells you it's a grant from right. Am I correct? Lawson will show us all of the detail. Yes, the, the first two numbers of all of our federal grants begin with the 2-1. So the activity number is really what designates the, the grant. And all the rest will have the same thing, am I correct? Well, they have, um, ESSER 2 had approximately six activities within the grant that were allowable. And that was for RIDE reporting up to the federal government level exactly how their stimulus dollars would be spent. That's why there's seven, uh, excuse me, six different grants. And actually, I don't have them memorized, but there's about, yes, there's six with ESSER 2. With, with ESSER 3, there's closer to 11. Um, there's six categories of activities that were allowable, and we had to pick the priority in which the funding was going to be focused on. We did that with ESSER 2 and the ESSER 3 dollars. So there are multiple grant lines for each grant, ESSER 2 <laughs> and ESSER 3 respectively. So could you, no further question of this, you could print out each one of these ESSER ones and tell me what's in them, am I correct? Yes, I believe it was so in April of 2022. I shared with you a crosswalk and I used color coding as well as num um, letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I crosswalked each of these activities to the approved grant. So it's in board docs. So it, should, it should be on, on board docs from um, a, a, April 11th, 2022 may have been the date. And at your request, I modified how I was reporting out our ESSER dollars into the format you see in front of you, which is in line with all of the other federal grants, which is by line item, including the category budgeted for each. Right, so April 11th, I can find that? I believe that was the exact date, yes. And, and it has um, uh, letters and, and it's color coded. And, and that's a crosswalk for ESSER too. Exactly what was budgeted and, um, and it crosswalks into the priority area that you see on, on page have, six. As you know, every week, every month, I say is I have serious concerns how this money has been spent. It's going to come back to haunt us at some point. And I don't know if this committee is prepared for that or not. You know, and that's just my opinion. You know, I'm not saying it's everybody else is over here, but it, it's, it's concerning the staffing and stuff that have been hired on ongoing costs, which you should never do, in my opinion, with money like that. It should be one time occurrences, period. But that's fine. You, you've done it, and, and I've, I've got my feel set. And go and thank you very much. So that's that's the monthly report. So yeah. Are there any other questions about the um, superintendent's report? I, I actually have one question about the. Um, or it might actually be a different page. The budget update. Yeah, eight point two. I'll wait till Ronnie's done. Yes, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no problem. It's actually in your, your um, summary in 8.1, in the very first paragraph, um, about two-thirds of the way down, ESSER 2 expires 9.30.23, and ESSER 3, including DSP, ex expires 9.30.20.40. Hmm, I wish. Typo. Was that the typo? <laughs> Or, uh, I'm, well, this is the first time I've seen that date. You first know? of all, um, okay. the way I memorize the ESSER funds expiration date is I just add one year yeah. to the number. So it's 2024, correctly. Okay. The, the zero is an extra okay. uh, digit. But oh, going back to the statement I made about how I set up the grants in Lawson, 
we, we only have one year at a time to budget. Yeah. Um, and that just hasn't been rolled over. And quite frankly, I'm not sure that we're even using that anymore because we are almost fully exhausted mm -hmm. with the ESSER $2. Mm -hmm. I have only established a budget for the ESSER 2 funds in which we use <coughs> or there's a remaining bar balance that was carried forward into our current school year. Okay. And, and that was probably half of the grants or priorities mm -hmm. of the one ESSER 2 grant. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. No problem. Any other discussion on the super transfer? Report? I guess I will ask. Um, um, I know that it takes time for all these programs to have uh, to work, and I we've asked this before, but I, this is to you and the superintendent that did the, the leaps programs are all done, and then you are evaluating the um, how well they're doing and so on. And just curious, at what point you guys are going to be reporting back to us on that? Yeah, LEAPS program has just begun. So we received the funding last year. We've had a just a slight delay, and it's just beginning. So we won't have data probably until the fall of where we are mm -hmm. or the summer, okay. and then we'll reflect upon that and decide how we move forward. Okay, so f probably fall on that leaps but how about other the sr2 that has been done and we're now following that with the sr3 money too right so you've changed some of the programs up i believe you haven't continued some of them and so on but are there some that you'd want to highlight as having impact to us in the public we have some um mtss coordinator for instance that's one that was put in using funding to see how well that supports the classroom teachers and what that does with the data. So is that data reflection implement, and then work um, making informed decisions based on that? Is that having any impact or change in the classroom or student achievement? That's a, an example. Um, so we are doing that on a regular quarterly basis with the principals, mm -hmm. but as far as positions, to Mr. Leary's um, point, what positions or what things we want to continue, we are looking for what results are we getting. So we, we are looking hard at staffing and positions we've put into place or additional positions for support, and is any data showing us that there's results. I know I've had the conversation with the administrators. I've mentioned it to the union leadership and that I believe the building principals will be speaking more to it with their staff, um, especially with the governor's um, inauguration speech about how he would like to see Mass uh, Rhode Island match Massachusetts as far as by 2030, as far as uh, change, as far as student achievement. Um, I know in conversations and hearing the um, new mayor, mm -hmm. he also has goals very similar, and he'd like Newport to be the example of mm -hmm. how it can be done in the state of Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's a bigger conversation with my leadership team and also with staff and teachers to let them hear what others are thinking we're capable of and what we can do in Newport. So right. that's what we're going to be doing right. in the coming month. Right. And you did have that MTSS. You had all of them come in, and that was very helpful to us to understand what Correct. they're doing. So we just love that when it's meat on the table of the good things going on in the school. So yes, that's all. Yep. Thank we you. have a lot going on. I know. It's yeah. Good. So thank you. Okay, uh, hearing no more discussion on this, um, all those in favor of accepting the superintendent staff report, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, um, next we move into meeting dates and agenda items. This may go on no. as one of the fastest meetings in, uh, in the history. Yep. I um, think you've missed uh, uh, Director Young. Oh, he's he's sorry. ready to go though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was he, he almost exited stage left very quickly. <laughs> Wait a he was on Come on up. Oh, so sorry. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm still a newbie, somewhat. Uh, please. Oh, it's going. Yes. Right. 
Good. So uh, first thing I'd like to do is introduce uh, David Halal. So he's going to be the new facilities director uh, here in Newport. Can you say his last name? Halal. Halal? Yes. Halal, yep. Halal. We welcome you with open arms. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. So, yeah, we're excited. He comes with a great background. And uh, he's already been in all the schools, met with all the uh, plant engineers, uh, the principals. And um, he's coming back to me with... Uh, uh, a laundry list of uh, things to get done. But, so we're excited to have him here. Anybody have any questions for him or comments? Or... Um, could you give us an update? Yeah, sure. On some of the activities you've been doing because it's been a few. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I mean, the, the overarching lion, elephant in the room is, is, is the heat, right? The heat in all the buildings. So uh, we've had companies come in multiple times and do like preventive maintenance checks. Um, and so we do have, uh, and one of the RTUs here is going to need some, some repair. And we're just, you know, over 10 years old, so it's getting to be that time. Also, there's one at, uh, at Thompson uh, that else, that's also needs to be focused. RTU means a rooftop unit. So the, the, the units on the top of the roof. Um, so, uh, and the ones at Rogers, uh, the boiler, um, you know, he comes in and fixes something on Tuesday and then on Thursday, it's a, it's a different part. So, uh, the, but the, the subs that have been coming in have been helpful uh, with us and, and kind of ordering parts in advance, trying to, to forecast uh, the need for some of the repairs. So it's been a, a challenge. And I think, uh, you know, I do want to say that the facility engineers, they do take it personally if there's no heat, like in a certain part of the building. So if you go and talk to them about it, they really, you can tell that they're stressed out. They're doing everything they can to make sure that that that's up and running. So, uh, but other and the other ones on here, just some 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 uh, just regular some regular traditional annual uh, maintenance on here. Uh, so we're doing pretty steady. We're prepared for the um, you know, for the white stuff to come down once it once we hopefully we're not going to get any this year but that's unlikely as we know um but we're, we're prepared for that we have a company that's going to come in and do some plowing for us um especially you know with the new uh area that has to be plowed here um so it's going to be a lot more difficult um all the snow blowers have been repaired um and tested so we're almost at one to one so every individual person has their own uh snow blower so that you know minimal shoveling um, and then we, we kind of met this week and talked about prepping, you know, the day before, if we get some of that stuff. So we're, we're getting ready for the, uh, for the winter months. Yep. Uh, just on, back to Rogers for a second on the heat. I yep. know that there was a change of policy to not turn it way yeah. down at night. Has yep. that helped? Cause I haven't that heard has. of the issues yeah. since then. Yeah. It has helped. And so, um, a better. Still cold. Yeah, it's still cold. It's just the, the way it works. So it, it kind of heats in sections of the building. So once it gets up to a certain level, it'll move to another section. And then when that heat, that section needs to get heated back up again, it'll come back to there. So it's a it's a system that they're always kind of you know chasing. You know, but it has going. helped to not turn yeah, it way yeah, down because it doesn't have to make that significant That's jump significant. in the morning. So we just keep it on okay. the whole time. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Anybody else want to comment or ask a question? Are you going to be the NAC tech director now going forward? <laughs> or the IT director? Yeah, going so we'll forward, still, um, I'll still have IT in the NAC tech, and I'm still going to work with David okay. on, on that piece. But uh, yeah. All right. Yep. He, he looks very happy you do, Robert. Yeah, that's a, you're not the only person to say that lately. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we're looking forward to have David here. He's doing a great job. Yes. Well, but we do. I do want to say, having been on the building committee, we thank you for all the work you have done on the facility. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. It won't be a hat trick anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're two hats. Okay. All right. So we um, that does take us to nine point one meeting dates and agenda items, and I I have a couple to put on. Um, one is I want to apologize to Mr. Leary publicly because we had said that we were going to um, put on uh, the reporting out of, of test scores and where we were as a district, but we needed a little more time to get it together. They're also going to report out the information I requested on um, reporting about students that have been in the district for a long time. How are we doing with them? Is there a difference? You know, because we do have a huge mobility issue, but 
So all that's going to be reported in February. And at that meeting, I, we're going to also try to set a couple goals, you know, um, for the district, for our superintendent, and um, and we're going to figure out, you know, going. Workshop, right? It's going to be a workshop because it's just too much for a school committee meeting. Um, and we're hoping we get a lot of input from teachers, and and um, so uh, they've got their work to do before that meeting. And then the um, what was the second thing? Lawyer. What's that? Lawyer. Our lawyer. Yes, we are going to have that. You're going to get something sent out probably tomorrow on on some possible dates so that we can, because um, that's very important that we get that in place. Uh, you know, in the meantime, we're not without a lawyer. He just um, is a telephone call away. But so those are the that's the things that I want to get on. Um, anybody else? Those are interview dates. Is that what yes, it is? Yes, interview right? possible interview dates. We have. To, it, there's a lot of things to coordinate with all. You know, we had three uh, um, possible uh, companies that um, sent in things. So um, we think we can get it all done in one night. Yes. Could you just clarify? So we'll have a normal Tuesday, uh, February school committee meeting, and then we'll hold a workshop yes. separate to discuss yes. the testing. So will their testing be discussed at the meeting, or people should want to come to the workshop? They want to come to the okay. workshop. It's just, just want to clear that for yeah, everyone. It's, it'll be a couple hours probably, you know. Truthfully, and we want participation from you know parents and and whatever. So, so I just to take that one step further. Those dates have not yet been set. Is that correct? Yes. For, okay. No, they not, have not been set, okay. but we have some possibilities. Um, and um, what was it? it just came to me again. Oh, so then the other thing we want to put on the next uh, is to talk about regionalization and what um, you know what the feeling is of this group. You know and. Um, so uh, that'll be on as a, it might even be on as an action. I probably should put it on as an action item in case we want to come out with a statement. Okay. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say, I, I understand from the superintendent that there are deadlines and decisions that need to be made for the, uh, regarding the program of studies that we pulled from the agenda yeah. tonight. So I, I'm willing to have a meeting very soon once the questions are answered to, to get that approved. So we don't hold up the high school and the kids. Okay, so if we are holding up the high school, you'll let us know. I will. All right, thank you. Okay, anybody else have any other suggestions? Okay, um, hearing none, um, I, we don't have the need for executive session tonight. Um, so I think, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Second. Move by Ms. Boatwright, seconded by Dr. Flowers. All those in favor? Hi. Uh, okay, wait. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to do my whole house. I'm going to have to sit down. 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 I'm going to Oh, good. I'll text Kathy then. Yeah. This one was right Like here. left on the shelf.